so next i am going to discuss one of the applications of collisions that is ballistic pendulum this ballistic pendulum is a simple arrangement where a wooden block is suspended by a string and is initially at rest this arrangement can be used to measure the speeds of bullets in the earlier days this ballistic pendulum was used for measuring the speeds of bullets so the bullet the mass of the bullet is known or measured the mass of the block is also supposed to be known just like in the case of simple pendulum here the wooden block is suspended by a string here i denote the mass of the wooden block by capital letter m which is originally attached with a string in the vertical position let us be the point of suspension you just concentrate only to listen here don't write the running notes when i am discussing i'll be showing you the notes for this later next let small m denote the mass of a bullet which is fired horizontally into the block that means u is the magnitude of the velocity of the bullet just before it strikes the block let us suppose the size of the block is large enough so that the bullet gets embedded into the block after the collision so that the combined mass rise of through some vertical height h above the lowest position let us suppose the combined mass capital m plus small m rises to a vertical height h above the lowest position that means the mass of combined mass becomes zero after it rises to a vertical height h above the lowest position so if you can make some arrangement i mean experimentally if we can make some arrangement to measure this height h i mean to measure if you can measure the vertical height h through which the combined mass rises after the collision and if you know the mass of the bullet and block or ratio of the mass of the bullet and block you can measure the speed of the bullet before collision so it is a completely inelastic collision therefore you can cannot equate kinetic energy of system of the block and bullet after collision with the kinetic energy of the bullet and block before collision but we can apply conservation momentum i mean momentum of the system of the block and bullet just after after collision can be equated to the momentum of the system before collision initial moment of the system before collision initial moment of the bullet plus initial moment of the block initial moment of the bullet just before collision is small m into u initial moment of the block before collision is zero let v denote the magnitude of the velocity of the combined mass just immediately after the collision So one time system just after collision, you can write capital M plus small m into v. So from this you can write the initial speed u of the bullet before collision equal to capital M plus small m into v by small m. So we can apply conservation of energy. for motion of the combined mass after collision remember that you cannot equate total mechanical energy system of the block and bullet after collision to the total mechanical energy of system before collision 
because the collision is not an elastic collision, it is inelastic collision. You can also check up that the kinetic energy after collision will be definitely less than the kinetic energy just before collision. So, we cannot equate the kinetic energy after collision to the kinetic energy before collision because it is not an elastic collision. But once the collision is completed, you can say you can equate total mechanical energy of the combined mass after collision. I mean just after collision at the right pressure. Is equal to total mechanical energy of the combined mass after collision at the highest position. That means we are just going to equate total mechanical energy of the combined mass just after collision to the total mechanical energy of the combined mass after collision at the highest position. That means we are equating total mechanical energy after collision to the total mechanical energy after collision at a later instant. So, for motion after the collision, I need not write the notes now, just concentrate only to listen. For motion after the collision, total energy, mechanical energy of the system of the block and bullet will be kinetic energy of the combined mass just after collision. You can write capital M, capital M, half into capital M plus small m into V square. The gravitational potential of the combined mass can be taken to be minimum or zero at the lowest position. So, if I can choose the lowest position of the combined mass as a reference position for measurement of gravitational potential, that can be the total mechanical energy of the combined mass at the highest position. So, the kinetic energy of the combined mass at the highest position is zero because velocity momentarily becomes zero at the highest position. Gravitational potential of the combined mass at the highest position. Can write capital M plus small m into GH. So from this you can cancel capital M plus small m. You get V square equal to 2 GH or V equal to root of 2 GH. You can substitute this value of V from second equation into the first equation. So if the bullet gets embedded into the block after the collision, if the bullet gets embedded into the block after the collision and the combined mass rises to a vertical height h above the lowest position after the collision then the initial speed of the bullet before the collision is given by capital M plus small m by small m whole multiplied by root 2 gh. This formula holds good when h is less than or equal to l, l is the length of the pendulum. Sometimes in the same question, you may be asked to compare the kinetic energy of system of the block and bullet just after collision to the kinetic energy of system of the bullet and block just before collision. So, you must know how to compare the final kinetic system with initial kinetic system. For that you must know the ratio of the magnet of velocity just after collision and magnet of velocity just before. So, from first equation you can write or from starting equation V by U equal to small m by capital M plus small m. Let k is F denote the final kinetic system of the block and bullet just after collision. K i denote the, I mean K subscript i denote the initial kinetic energy of the bullet just before collision. The final kinetic energy system of the block and bullet just after collision. Can write half capital M plus small m into V squared. The initial kinetic energy of the bullet just before collision is half small m into U squared. That is capital M plus small m by small m into V by U whole square. Now I can substitute V by U equal to small m by capital M plus small m. I can substitute V by U equal to small m by capital M plus small m. 
So small m square by small m will be small m in numerator. Capital M plus small m divided by capital M plus small m whole square will be capital M plus small m in denominator. So finally get the ratio of the final kinetic energy system of the block and bullet just after collision. And the initial kinetic energy system just before collision. Equal to small m by capital M plus small m. So in practice the mass of the bullet will be definitely less than the mass of the block. So mass of the bullet will be definitely much less than the total mass of the block and bullet in any example in the ballistic pendulum. So on the right hand side small m is much less than capital M plus small m. Therefore ratio of small m by capital M plus small m will be much less than 1. So the final kinetic energy system of the block and bullet just after collision will be much less than the initial kinetic energy system before collision. So Kf will be much less than Ki. That means there will be a greater loss of kinetic energy. That's why such collisions we call completely inelastic collisions. In some of the problems, you may not be given the height h directly. You may be given the length of the string and this angle theta or theta naught, which the string makes with the downward vertical, and the combined mass reaches the highest position. Then you can express h in terms of L and theta naught, which I discussed in one of the cases in work power energy. H can be written as L into 1 minus cos theta naught. The theta naught is the maximum angle which the string makes with the vertical after collision. I have explained the calculation for this conclusion in the past in work power energy. So next I am going to show you the notes for whatever I have discussed about the ballistic pendulum. You can get ready with your notebook and pen. Come on, write down the notes here. Look at the screen. First I have shown the conclusion directly on the screen. Later I will be showing you the working path. This conclusion can be used directly while solving numerical problems in objective type questions. I will once read out the conclusion. Consider a wooden block of mass capital M suspended by a light string forming a pendulum of length L. This should be small l. And is initially at rest. Let a bullet of mass small m moving horizontally strike the block such that the bullet gets embedded into the block after the collision. The combined mass rises to a vertical to a maximum vertical height small h. H is much h is less than or equal to small l here. Then the initial speed of the bullet before the collision is given by u equal to capital M plus small m divided by small m whole multiplied by root 2 gh. Come on, copy down the conclusion first. So in case you need more time to copy the conclusion, you can take a pause and take your time. I am going to show you the notes or working or calculation for the conclusion. The next slide. So from Kandarai momentum, you can write momentum just before collision, because momentum just after collision. That is small m into u, you can write capital M plus small m into v. You can copy the figure also. So from this, you can write u equal to capital M plus small m by small m into v. For motion after collision from conservation of energy, kinetic energy plus potential energy. Mm -hmm. For the combined mass just before collision, must be equal to the kinetic energy. I am sorry, 
the kinetic energy plus potential energy per motion of the combined mass just after collision is equal to sum of kinetic energy and potential energy of the combined mass at the highest position after collision. So you get V square equal to 2GH or H equal to V square over 2G in case you are asked to find H you are and you are given U. So you can from same equation you can write V equal root 2GH. Substitute this value of V in the from second equation in the first equation. You get the conclusion I have given initially. So those who are writing the notes command finish copying up to here. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your own time. So next I am going the showing the calculation for comparison of the final kinetic energy after collision to the final initial kinetic energy before collision. So from first and second equation the initial speed of bullet before collision you can write capital M plus small m by small m into root of 2 gh. From first equation we can write V by U equals small m by capital M plus small m. Here Kf is the final kinetic energy combined mass just after collision. K i is the initial kinetic energy combined mass just before collision. K f can be written as half capital M plus small m into u square, K i is equal to half small m into u square. Come on, all of you finish, to finish writing the notes up to here. So, in case you need more time, you can take a pause and take your time. So you get Kf by Ki equal to capital M plus small m by small m into V by U whole square. You can substitute V by U equal to small m by capital M plus small m. Which gave which you get small Kf by K equal to small m by capital M plus small m. And H in terms of theta naught you can write L into 1 minus cos theta naught. Here theta naught is the angle made by the string or pendulum with a downward vertical at the instant the combined mass reaches the highest position. Come on all of you finish writing up to here. In case you need more time to copy this you can take a pause and take your time. Next I am going to discuss some problems now in one dimensional collisions. Look at the problem number two. In collisions, I will once read out the problem. A body moving along a high end surface makes head on collision with a stationary body of same mass. Such that the final kinetic energy system of the two bodies is 3 by 4 of the initial kinetic energy just before the collision. What is the question of restitution between the two bodies? So here the two bodies have same mass. So mass of second body is same as the mass of the first body. And initial of the second body is zero. So kinetic energy lost, kinetic energy system, final kinetic energy system is 3 by 4 of the initial kinetic energy. So kinetic energy lost, you can write initial kinetic energy denoted by Ki minus final kinetic energy system. The final kinetic energy system is after the collision given to be 3 by 4 of the initial kinetic energy system. Therefore, kinetic energy lost is 1 by 4 of initial kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy of system can be written as half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square. But second body is initially at rest. So initial kinetic of second body is 0. I have discussed one formula earlier in the theory part in the previous class. Kinetic energy lost in a one dimensional collision is given by 
half m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 multiplied by u1 minus u2 whole square and whole multiplied by 1 minus e square. Now I am going to substitute here kinetic energy loss is equal to 1 by fourth of initial kinetic energy. So on the left hand side you can write ke loss equal to 1 fourth of half m1 u1 square. So on the right hand side you can substitute m2 equal to m1. So m m2 equal to m1. If you substitute m2 equal to m1, both numerator and denominator, m1 plus m2 becomes m1 plus m1, that is 2m1. And u2 is 0. Into 1 minus e square. This has to be simplified. Come on, copy down the working. In case you need more time to copy the working, you can take a pause and copy down the working and complete the simplification part. If you complete the simplification part yourself, you are supposed to get 1 minus e square equal to 1 by 2. Or e square is 1 minus 1 by 2 or 1 by 2. Or e is 1 by root 2 which is equal to 0.707, that's the answer. In case you want need more time to copy this solution, you can take a pause and copy the solution. So, look at the problem on the screen. Problem 3, the sphere moving along a horizontal surface at 90 meter per second makes a head-on collision with an identical sphere moving in the opposite direction with linear speed v, v equal to 0.8 and the sphere comes to rest after the collision then find v. So you are given the initial velocity of one of spheres as 90 meter per second, the two spheres are moving in opposite directions here. So the two, two spheres are moving in opposite directions. As per the usual notation we followed, the mass of first sphere we denoted by m1, mass of second sphere by m2, the initial loss to the first sphere by u1 before collision, u2 is the initial loss second sphere before collision. The two spheres are moving in opposite directions. So if you give positive sign, for the initial loss of first sphere, you have to give negative sign for the initial loss of second sphere. So you can write u1 equal to 90 meter per second and u2 equal to minus v because second sphere is moving in opposite directions with speed v. Speed is positive here. So if you give positive sign for initial loss t per sphere, you have to give negative sign for initial loss of second sphere. So the quotient of restitution between the two spheres is given to be 0.8 and after the collision the first sphere comes to rest so v1 is 0 that is final loss first sphere after collision is 0 so in any one dimensional collision you can write v2 minus v1 equal to minus e into u2 minus u1 or e into u1 minus u2 or you can write e into u1 minus u2. Now you can substitute here v1 equal to 0 and e equal to 0.8, u1 equal to 90 meter per second and u2 equal to minus v. So you get v2 equal to, if you open the bracket 0.8 into 90, that will be 7. 72 meter per second 
plus 0.8V. Then applying conservation of linear momentum, that is momentum of system of the two colliding masses just after collision. Total linear water system of the two colliding masses just after collision can be called total linear water system of the two colliding bodies just before collision. So, can write m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equal m1 u1 plus m2 u2. Here, both these spheres are identical, means they have same mass. Can denote the mass of each sphere by m. So, v1 is 0. Can denote mass of each sphere by 0. I am sorry, mass of each sphere can denote it by m. V1 equal to 0. M1 is m, u1 is 90 meter per second. M2 is m, u2 is minus v. So, you can take m common on the right hand side. So, 90 meter per second v. So, m gets cancelled. So, v2 equal to 90 meter per second minus v. You can substitute this value of v2 into the first equation or you can substitute the value of v2 from first equation into the second equation. So, you can combine the equations 1 and 2. You can substitute here v2 equal to 72 meter per second plus 0.8 v from first equation on the left hand side of the second equation. Those who want to copy the solution of the problem, they can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem and they can complete the simplification part. So, you get V equal to 10 meter per second is also. So, in case you are asked to find the velocity of the second body after collision, you can substitute this value of V in the second equation or in the first equation. Then you get V2 equal to 80 meter per second. See the next problem, question number 4. A small ball capital A is released from rest from the top of a smooth curved track which is in the form of one quadrant of a circle of radius 40 centimeter. It makes a head-on elastic collision with an identical ball B which is initially at rest at the bottom of the track. Find the velocities of A and B just after collision. So, to find the velocities of A and B just after collision, you have to first find the velocity of the first ball A just before collision by applying conservation of mechanical energy. For motion of the ball A before the collision. So, the ball A, first ball A moves down a smooth curve track. That means there is no friction. So, when the ball A moves down the smooth curve track, so that no work is done by friction or non conservative forces, then the total mechanics of the ball A remains constant during its motion down the track before the collision with the ball B. 
let u1 be the velocity of the ball a just before it collides with the ball b at the bottom of the track let u1 be the magnitude of velocity of the first ball a just before it collides with second ball b and you initial loss the second ball b just before collision is zero the velocity of the ball a at the top of the track when it is released is zero so i will apply conservation of mechanical energy for motion of the ball a before collision because it moves on a smooth curve track its total mechanical of the ball a remains constant during its motion before the collision with the ball b so sum of the final kinetic of the ball a at the bottom of the track before it collision takes place and potential energy must be same as sum of the initial kinetic energy initial potential energy so kinetic of the ball a just before collision at the bottom of the track is equal to half m a into u1 square potential energy can be taken as zero at the bottom of the track so the highest position velocity zero so kinetic of the ball a is zero gravitational potential of the ball a at its initial position at the top of the track is equal to mass of the ball a into g into h which is the initial height of the ball a before collision h is the height of the ball a from where it is released you can observe from the figure that you can take h equal to here r that is the radius of the track so magnitude of velocity of the ball a just before the collision with the ball b will be root of 2 gr g can take an 9.8 meter per second radius of track is given as 40 cm sir you can write it as 0.4 meter you can write in the form of product of perfect square factors here so get the velocity of the ball a before collision just before collision with the ball b at the bottom of the track is 2.8 meter per second as i discussed in the first special case in elastic one time at a collision or in a head on elastic collision if the two colliding bodies have same mass then their velocities will be exchanged or interchanged after the collision that is the final velocity of the first ball a just after collision will be called initial of the ball b before collision and final velocity of the ball b just after collision is equal to initial of the ball a just before collision here u1 is 2.8 meter per second and u2 is zero the initial of the ball b just before collision is zero <coughs> therefore the final velocity of the ball a just after collision becomes zero and final velocity of the ball b just after collision will be 2.8 meter per second therefore answer sir Zero and two point eight meter per second. If you want to copy the solution of the problem, you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem. <coughs> so, with this, I have completed the discussion of the theory part and of one-dimensional collisions. and uh,
I have also discussed some problems for questions, I think, for problems in collisions. So in my next class, I will be showing you the assignment, the first assignment in collisions. So I will be showing you 30 questions in the assignment in collisions. And many of them are of multiple choice questions, and there are some problems without multiple choice options also. So I will not be discussing the solutions of those problems in my next class. I will be just showing you the questions one by one. And after showing all the questions, I will be showing you the answers so that you can take up your working. So after reading or showing each question, I will be giving little time which may or may not be sufficient to solve the problem. Probably for most of the students, the pause or time I give to solve the problem may not be sufficient. You can take a pause and take your own time to solve the problem. So after completing all the 30 questions, I'm, you can go through the answers which I will be showing after the assignment, first 30 questions. Then check up your answers. In the class after that, that means after the, after I have shown you the assignment, in my in the later class, or in the next class after assignment, I will be discussing the solutions of all the questions in the assignment, one after another. So some of the students may be able to solve more number of questions, and there are some students may not be able to solve good number of questions. You should, don't get discouraged or disappointed if you are not able to answer most of the questions in the assignment. There may be good number of students who may be able to just answer five or six questions or ten questions maximum within 30 questions in the assignment, but still you don't get discouraged. Everyone can improve if they try to improve sincerely. So in case you feel that you are very weak in solving the problem and you are not able to answer most of the questions in the assignment when you read them for the first time, you can do like this. After going through the assignment, you go through the solutions of all the questions which I will be discussing in the class immediately after the assignment. After going through the solutions of all the 30 questions, you can take a gap. I mean, you can take one day gap and next day again you come back to the assignment in collisions. Again, go through all the 30 questions without looking now. The next day, you go through the, all the 30 questions again afresh without looking at the solutions or answers which might have copied. Then again, try to work out them independently on your own the next day. So when you may not be able to answer good number of questions when you read those questions for the first time, but if you try them again, I mean after going through the solutions, you take one day gap and again you try them, the assignment again starting from beginning of the assignment, again go through all the 30 questions in the assignment without looking at the answers or solutions which you might have copied. Then you try to see that, and then when you try them again, you will be able to solve most of the questions. And finally, what is needed is you should be able to answer any one of these problems or questions or similar questions or problems in case similar question or problem is given in entrance examination. So in my next class, I will be showing the assignment in collisions. So after that, I will be discussing the solutions of all the questions in assignment in collisions. After discussion of the solutions, I will be briefly also discussing about two-dimensional theory of two-dimensional collisions. And assignment of collisions, I will be showing you the continuous second part of the assignment collisions, that is from 31 onwards, involving little more standard problem or some questions related to two-dimensional collisions.